Hello and welcome to Excel Champs Mastering Pivot Tables with Excel. I am your coach Vinay Prakash. In this video, I am going to talk about what exactly is a pivot table. How do you create one? And then we will actually create our first pivot table. You can watch it. After that, you can try it out on your own because all the exercise files are available for your use. But don't do it right now. Just watch carefully and you will be able to create a pivot table on your own pretty easily. So to begin with, I am going to click on the inventory data exercise file and this will fire up Excel. Now Excel has opened and we look at the inventory report. What we have here is the store the product, the part number, vendor name, units on hand and the unit price. Now if you look at it, we don't have too much data. It's about 34 rows and the top two rows are the heading only. So we have just about 30 rows and it may look like a small amount of data but it will be quite sufficient for us to explore the pivot table. So let's see how to create a pivot table. First thing, to get started on your first pivot table, we can click anywhere inside the table. It doesn't matter where we are. All you need to do is to go to the insert menu item at the very top and then the very first button on the left, it says pivot table. So we simply click on it. You will now notice that the entire data has been selected. How can you make it out? By the marching ants that you see walking all around the data. The table data has been selected and it says the data will be selected from $A$3 to $F$34. That means from A3, the including the heading, to F34 which is the last row and last column here. The pivot table will be created in a new worksheet. So this is fine. We don't want to change it. That means we haven't made any change in this pop-up box. All we need to do is to click OK. Let's do that. Now what we see is a blank pivot table report. That's how it will always look like. If you look at it, we have a blank pivot table, nothing in it except for some pictures and icons. Now here is where we are going to create our pivot table report. Now the magic actually happens on the right hand side. We are going to see the fields that were available to us. In the data, we had the store, the product, the part number, vendor, units on hand and the unit price. So all of the headings have been placed here. Now it says drag fields between the areas below. In a pivot table report there are four major areas. The report filter, column area, row labels and the values section. Now you may not be able to see all of them right now. So let's begin by making a pivot table first and then you will be able to see all of this on your own. To begin, all we need to do is to click on the store. When you click on the store, immediately couple things happen. One, you see a list of all the stores. These are unique stores. There are no duplicates here. The second thing you notice is the word store has now automatically appeared under the row labels section. Now we will go ahead and click on units on hand. Because units on hand is a number, it's a numeric value, it automatically jumps into the values section. And right now we are looking at what's the total quantity of units in each of the stores. Therefore, we have our first summary report ready. We can see what is the situation. How many parts do we have in Rochester? 
What's the quantity in Buffalo? How many parts do we have in Utica? Without having to write any single formula, without writing anything at all. All we have done is just click on the mouse a couple times and we have our first pivot table report. Now let's see what else can be done. So let's say we click on the vendor and as expected vendor is a text therefore vendor automatically moves to the row labels. Right now what we are looking at is under the store Albany what is the position of diamond? How many parts do we have from the diamond vendor? We have 100 parts. How many parts do we have from letter C? And it's 50 parts. So like this we are able to see. But if you notice now the report has more data than can be seen on the single page. So we will have to scroll to see the entire data. Right? The number hasn't changed. We still see the grand total is 2486. But we can do better than this. What we can do is we can move the vendor from the row labels into the column labels. So all I have done is selected it. I click, drag and drop it in the columns area. So we have vendor here and if you notice now the data is arranged by rows and by columns. We can still see the same data 2486 parts but we don't need to scroll now. We can see how many parts do we have by each vendor. So I can see from diamond we have 498 parts and at the same time we can also see that Ithaca has 63 parts of which 20 are from pile and 43 are from quick parts. So in this way a cross tabulated report has been created without writing a single formula. All we are doing is clicking and using the mouse. Now why do we really call it a pivot table? The point is that we can move our data labels in the way we want it. That means we can rearrange our data. For example, I can bring the vendor here and I can move the store to the column labels. The same report now is visible by vendor by store. The total still 2486. And do not worry at all. With pivot tables you generally can't get wrong. If at all you make a mistake it's pretty easy to remove or undo your mistakes. For example if let's say you did not want the vendor here. No problem. Just click on it, drag and throw it out. That's it. Now we don't see the vendor. You want to bring the store back into the row labels? You can do so. Now we have our original report. Now let's say I bring the vendor back into the column labels. This was what we had just received. So buy store, buy vendor. This area, if you notice, is blank, the report filter. So what we will do is, we will take the product and we will drag it into the report filter area. If you have noticed, there are two ways to bring the data into the pivot table. One is by dragging and dropping and the second is by checking on the checkboxes. If you check on the checkbox, most of the time, Text items go into the row labels and numeric items go into the values area. But after they are moved into the row labels, we can move them around. For example, I can move the store here and I can bring the product here. Now we are looking at the same inventory by the products. So we can see how many CD-ROMs do we have. We have 43 CD-ROMs of which 20 come from letter C and 18 come from quick parts like this. So what exactly is the purpose of the store under the report filter? If you notice now we have store showing up in the report filter. So what we can do we can select any particular store. If I select Albany only now we are looking at all the inventory from Albany by product 
by vendor. So basically, it's a three-dimensional data. We are looking at three things: by store, by vendor, and by product. This kind of thing is amazing. If pivot tables were not there, we will have to request our IT department to write such a report. And I can tell you, in working with IT departments, you could easily be three to six months away from getting your report. You could be queue number four hundred and fifty-six, and by the time they get to your request, you may no longer need the report. But with the pivot table, you are not at the mercy of anybody from the IT department. You can really create your own reports on the fly without having to do any programming, without having to write any single formula. Just play with your mouse. As long as you can move your mouse, you can get along with the pivot table. It's that simple. So let's see what else can we do within the pivot table. So let's do a little bit of practice. I am now going to move the store here and move the product at the top. Right now, we are looking at all the products. If the window seems too small, you can enlarge it by clicking on the right bottom corner like this, where you see the three dots. Just drag it. So I can only see what's the position of the monitors. Click OK. And now I see the position of the monitors. But this is quite painful. I can only see one thing at a time. If you want to see more than that, what we can do is we can click on select multiple items. Click on this checkbox and what you get now is a checkbox on each of the products. You could see now, I want to click on mouse and keyboard and monitors, three products. If I click OK now, I see the total inventory of all the three parts combined together. But you can't see the split now. How many are monitors? How many are products? That won't be visible. If you want to see that now, all you need to do is take the product and bring it below the store. So what will happen now is we are still looking at the three products for each store. Now you can see the breakdown that we have a total of 40 parts in Buffalo and they are made up of only monitors. So we can now see what are the different parts given by the different vendors. So in this way, we can create a pivot table report on the fly. Anytime you feel this is not what you wanted, just click on it, drag and throw it out. Drag, throw it out. Drag it out, cancel. Drag it out, cancel. You can also click on the clear button and say clear all and everything is gone. You are back to square one. So you can now begin to create your pivot table all over again. Let's do that very quickly. Click on store, click on product, click on units on hand. We have a basic pivot table. I can move the product in the right hand side. And if I want to filter, I can take the vendor, bring it into the report area. And voila, I have a minimum basic pivot table report without having to do anything. It just takes less than half a minute to create this. So what you can do now is go into the exercises area, pick up the file, inventory data, and begin to play with it. See how easy it is to move things into row, column, or values area. Play with it. I'm sure you'll feel pretty amazed and pretty powerful at the same time. That's it for this video. In the next lesson, we will look at what else can be done, how to get familiar with the menus and the different styles that we can apply. That's it for now. All the best.